so ever since I started making videos on Boogie 2988, a lot of people have asked me, like, why do I care so much? Why am I so obsessed with this guy? And don't get me wrong, I am absolutely deeply interested in Boogie, probably to an unnecessary extent. But I do think that the lies that he tells and the narratives that he tries to spin, they are important. Like, this isn't some kid doing some story time video that's completely inconsequential. Like, this is serious stuff about his life, stuff that impacts his audience, stuff that impacts the creator that try to give him a fair shake and help him out and stuff that impacts himself like I honestly think that a lot of these lies that Boogie tells they start to get him confused about what the actual truth is and I'll be splitting this video up into those three sections how it impacts the audience how it impacts other creators and how it impacts Boogie himself when it comes to his audience, let's just start with the obvious one, the financial stuff. I don't know how much of it is Boogie intentionally misleading people versus just genuinely being confused himself and accidentally misrepresenting stuff, but he has not painted a clear picture of his finances. And the reason that this matters is people will donate to him. They will buy more merch. They will subscribe to him on Patreon to try and help him out when he might not desperately need that help as much as he's made them believe. And this wouldn't really matter for other YouTubers, like you don't need to know the financial status of somebody in order to enjoy their content and support them, but with Boogie, it's such a major plot point of his life. Like he talks about it all the time on rambling videos and in live streams, that if you're an appreciator of Boogie and you're somebody who trusts him and gives him the benefit of the doubt, you could think you have a very clear idea of what his finances are and be like, okay, well this is what he's telling me and this is what I can afford to do to help him out. And that brings me to my my second issue with Boogie and his audience, and that's the idea of being an open book. Like most recently with the documentary, Boogie initially referred to it as, this is me, warts and all, and I feel so free to have the truth out there. And then he went back on that to say that like some of the stuff was a joke and it shouldn't be taken seriously. And the documentarian was fudging numbers and stuff like that. But far before the documentary, Boogie has considered himself an open book and has no problem sharing almost every aspect of his life, including the most traumatic things that have happened to him. And to an audience member who's giving Boogie the benefit of the doubt and follows these videos closely, it can really start to feel like you know Boogie on a personal level. As cringy as it is to say, this affected me personally, and no, my life was not ruined, I wasn't like donating to Boogie. I did donate to him one time to get a question answered, but when I said I used to look up to Boogie in my video about the documentary, a lot of people were like, bro, how? Are you serious? You looked up to Boogie 298? And all I can say to that is like, you kind of had to be there. Like pre-2017, 2018, Boogie really did a great job of keeping up a very specific persona and telling so many stories about his life that tracked together logically that you really felt like you knew the guy. Everything was different after 2017, 2018. After the divorce, once people started to notice that Boogie had two very different personalities on his Twitch live streams versus in his YouTube videos, there was so much more criticism and questions poised towards Boogie that once he started having to answer those questions, he had to start coming up with explanations. And I think in his attempts to explain things, he started getting lost in his own lies and lost in what he he was trying to represent to the public and I'll talk more about this in how Boogie's lies affect himself. This will probably be the shortest, or at least the simplest, section of the video, and that's how Boogie's lies affect other creators, and I've seen this happen a couple times behind the scenes, where a creator will have harsh criticisms of Boogie, and then Boogie DMs them, and they talk for a while, and all of a sudden, they don't have a problem with Boogie anymore, and they really don't want to talk about it, and the most clear example of this is just a couple days ago on the LolCow Live podcast, Turkey Tom was talking about how he visited Boogie's house, and now he kind of has a different perspective on boogie anything boogie says is probably like 40 percent true yeah if that mm -hmm. and that's being generous honestly like a lot of it could just be fake um so yeah i mean he, he twists things a lot and he'll come up with weird justifications for it um i don't want him to do that you know i, I don't after spending time at his house i mean he's to me, he's not an evil person. He's just a giant fuck up. He's a giant, giant, giant fuck up. And he'll probably continue to be that for the foreseeable future. But do you not see it as manipulative? Do you not see it oh, as of like course a it, of, Yeah, no, I mean, yeah it's absolutely manipulative. Yeah. Of course it's manipulative. But is it is it is it hurting anyone other than himself when people find out? Not really. I don't know. I don't it know. seems pretty 
like when he when he acts like oh this is all for his fans and stuff like this and, and then it turns out he has more sinister motives and stuff and he's interacting with people lying about being swatted for sympathy that's, that's true yeah no okay the, the, the swatting know, thing you're right that that is yeah i don't know it's pretty fucking maybe evil right. i guess maybe i'm just like <laughs> feeling weird about it because i've been texting with boogie a little bit about this stuff and um but no but that's how like... that's how it is bro you talk to him for like 20 minutes and he makes you feel really fucking bad for him and then you get on stream you're like guys come on all right listen he didn't really mean it like that that just means he won that means he got you you're you right, lost. You're right, you're that's, right. and for anybody who's familiar with turkey tom's content i do think he's gotten nicer and softened up a little bit over the years but he's definitely not afraid to pull punches he will insult you he will criticize you to your face like i'm actually going to be covering an interview that he did with boogie because it's one of the few examples of somebody sitting down with boogie to talk to him and challenging him on lies or misconceptions and forcing him to answer to certain questions and sorry that video is taking forever but just like anything Thing with boogie when things are mentioned in an interview with him there's like six hours of research that you have to do into like other podcast appearances he's been on and previous videos and statements on twitter and statements on reddit it's like a nightmare to go through this guy's history but even he when meeting boogie in person and talking in text is like starting to not heavily run defense for boogie but starting to like rewrite certain narratives about him and i think that that's one the power of having to talk to someone one-on-one -on -one like a lot of these sad things that have happened to boogie if he can communicate them to you effectively in that one-on-one -on -one setting it's a lot harder to take yourself outside of that and add all the context when this sad person is just talking to you directly so even though i feel personally that if i talked to boogie one-on-one -on -one, i would not be able to be manipulated by him it does seem from tom's story and other stories i've heard behind the scenes that he is very effective at winning people over to his side if he gets a chance to explain things to them one-on-one -on -one. and the consequence of this is a lot of creators have criticized boogie and then gone on to run defense for him after talking to him one-on-one -on -one, and then boogie does something bad down the road and they end up looking foolish for defending him and now we're at the most important part of the video and that's how boogie's lies affect steven williams boogie 2988 and i'm not gonna sit here and be like oh yeah actually all the content that i create is to help boogie i just want him to do better like in my opinion if boogie's life in proved right now and he was actually able to turn things around and live a generally honest life and go on to be a happy person that would change absolutely nothing in my life that would be an objectively good thing i don't think anybody is hurt by boogie's life becoming better i'm just not going to sit here and pretend that like i'm trying to make these videos to help boogie the point of these videos is to as best i can try and inform an audience of what boogie's really like what the story actually is which at the end of the day is completely completely impossible there's such an insane web of lies and mistakes and confusion that we're never going to get the real story but i'd like to try my best to point individual things out and so how do boogie's lies negatively affect him once again we have to go back to 2017 2018 boogie is presenting two vastly different personalities on twitch and youtube the twitch edgelord the youtube nice guy and he's having to start to answer for it and i think this started at least from our perspective as an audience an endless cycle of of what they call post hoc justifications and my understanding of that is probably not right but my understanding of it is it's when you do a thing and you did it for some sort of reason but then when asked about why you did it you explain an entirely different reason and one of the best examples of this is boogie's relationship with swatting and this whole situation is deeply confusing but i'll try and simplify it so from what i understand boogie has been legitimately swatted in the past but from 2018 to 2019 boogie made two false claims of being swatted where he said hey i was swatted on these dates and then people looked it up in police records and saw that there was no police visit to his house on those dates now why would somebody lie about being swatted the most logical explanation is to one make people feel bad for them and to two make their detractors look inhuman and awful however this is not what boogie explained to be the case first off he tried to lie about it and say that he actually made a deal with his local police 
police department to expunge any visits to his house due to swattings, which is not something that police are legally allowed to do, and it absolutely did not happen, and Boogie has admitted to that at this point. But his further explanation about why he lied about all of this was he was trying to play some sort of 4D chess mind game with the trolls and get them to, like, oh, he wasn't swatted on these days, he was swatted on those days to try and, like, make them look bad or something? I don't know, it's really fucking confusing. And that sort of confusion is exactly the reason why I think Boogie's lies affect him so negatively. In my opinion, Boogie is a very impulsive person who makes a lot of decisions that just serve him in a specific moment or for no reason at all. Like, his edgy jokes are a great example of this. He likes to make edgy jokes, especially if he's in the company of other edgy people. He seems to want to prove his edgy street cred. But instead of just being a nice guy that also makes edgy jokes, he tries to like rationalize a lot of these edgy jokes as, no, there was actually an altruistic and cool reason why I told this instead of, I just wanted to make people laugh who have a dark sense of humor. Okay, I'm mind fucking myself with this explanation that I'm about to make, but I really hope this follows logically because it makes some sense in my head. So Boogie makes an impulsive decision and then in order to try and make himself look good, he tries to explain it away with some different rationalization for why it happened. Then time passes and somebody asks him about this thing that happened in the past. Now instead of just coming clean and saying, hey, it was an impulsive decision, I don't know why I did that, he explains it with the thing that makes him look good and he has to serve that reality. And then, if the person he's interviewing tries to push him for more of an explanation, he then needs to explain more of a reality that does not actually exist. And his explanation could even vary based on, hey, I'm on a left-leaning podcast, I'm on a right-leaning podcast, I'm in front of this audience, I'm in front of that audience. So he's creating all these, like, splitting realities and things that never happened to him and that he never thought, but he has to keep all of them in line in his head to try and be this this person that he's trying to present himself as. And if this theory is true, which I believe it is to some extent, but it is just my opinion, I have to imagine it's incredibly exhausting. And now that all of it's out there and so much of his personality has been built up on this foundation, I think it's really hard to go backwards. Now, having said that, I do think that he has enough of an audience. Like he's got like 20 to 50,000 people watching some of these gaming videos who seem to be thrilled that the regular Boogie is back making content about current games that I think if he really wanted to, he could probably go back to like, hey, I'm the nerdy nice guy on YouTube to those people, and they would probably accept it until the end of time, because if they've lasted this long, they can probably last through anything. Now, the issue with that is that Boogie has a very strong tendency to want to set the record straight if people are either lying about him or trying to make him look bad, as I explained in my video about the Boogie cycle, so it may be hard for him to stick with that one personality for the rest of his career. But I do think that if he managed to somehow just stop creating new controversy and stop addressing old controversies, he could really do a good job of just being a nerdy guy on the internet. And I think a lot of that involves just the end of oversharing. Boogie has such a tendency to overshare everything about his life and try to be this open book, and I just don't think that helps anybody. Like, for people like me, who used to be a fan, used to appreciate getting to see that real side of Boogie, it just ends up being deeply disappointing when we start to see more of the lies and the inconsistencies and see different aspects of his personality exposed. Like, it's just deeply disappointing. So maybe just cut off that open book policy, close the book. Just be a personality online. You don't have to be a real guy online. None of us are really real guys online. There's always an aspect of theatrics or entertainment or whatever. So yeah, I made this video to uh, try and explain why Boogie's lies hurt people and I ended up just confusing myself deeply and probably concerning my entire audience as to why I thought so deeply about this and uh, why I put on that tinfoil hat with all the explanations, but let me know if any of it made sense. Make sure you're staying super hydrated. Thank you to the channel members on screen. Skate on to the best of your abilities. Later, everybody.